Permanent Mold Casting The permanent mold casting is a metal casting process that employs reusable molds. The mold can be used multiple times without any problem, but there are few limitations. Such as, permanent molds take lots of time to produce, and are costly, when compared to temporary molds. In case if the production required or the number of parts needed to produce are low, it is not recommended to use permanent mold, because it is not economical. The permanent mold is usually made of metal. The most common process uses gravity to fill the mold with molten metal, however gas pressure or a vacuum are also used. Common casting metals are aluminium, magnesium, and copper alloys. And other materials are tin, zinc, lead alloys, and iron and steel are also cast in graphite molds. Components such as, gears, splines, wheels, gear housings, pipe fittings, fuel injection housings, and automotive engine pistons can be made using permanent mold casting. Types of Permanent Mold Casting There are four main types of permanent mold casting, they are, gravity process, slush permanent mold casting, low pressure permanent mold casting, and vacuum permanent mold casting. Working Process These are the basic steps to follow in permanent mold casting. Melting of metal takes lots of time. First put the metal in the furnace and set to the required temperature. Now, preheat the mold to 150 to 200 degrees Celsius. The mold is preheated to ease the flow of molten metal into the mold and to reduce thermal damage to the casting. The mold cavity is then coated with a refractory material or a mold wash, which prevents the casting from sticking to the mold and prolongs the mold life. Cores are used to produce internal cavities or hollow shapes. Two types of cores can be used as per the requirement of the part that is to be produced, they are, sand cores, and metal cores. After installing the required core, the next step is to pour the molten metal into the mold. After the solidification the mold is opened, and the casting is removed to reduce chances of hot tears. The process is then started all over again, but preheating is not required because, the heat from the previous casting is adequate, and the refractory coating should last several castings. Because this process is usually carried out on large production, Automated equipment is used to coat the mold, pour the metal, and remove the casting. Whenever the manufacturing process which involves casting, we need to avoid the casting defects as far as possible. Else, the complete work in producing a part will be a waste. The resources that are wasted, if the casting is defective are, electricity used, fuel used to melt metal in the furnace, labor cost, raw material cost and many more. So, need to take necessary precautions while producing the part. The metal is poured at the lowest practical temperature in order to minimize cracks and porosity. The pouring temperature can range greatly depending on the casting material, for instance, Zinc alloys are poured at approximately 370 degrees Celsius, while gray iron is poured at approximately 1370 degrees Celsius. Thanks for watching.